Hello, I'm Parker Kligerman, and we're just past stage four in the 2021 Dakar Rally here on the Motorsports NBC YouTube page. We're going to be talking to competitors and personalities around the Dakar. Today, though, my guest is American Skylar House, who took the overall lead after stage three. And Skylar, I got to ask you, how awesome was that to see your name above the top of the standings in the overall at the Dakar in 2021? Man, I'll tell you um... – it's been a dream of mine just to come to Dakar to begin with. And then uh, to get a ninth overall, a top 10 finish last year was pretty awesome. And coming into this year, you know, I had, uh, uh, I always hold myself to a high standard, but uh, coming in after uh, stage three and uh, putting a camera in front of my face saying that I'm the, now the uh, overall leader of the Dakar rally is, uh, man, that's pretty cool. And uh, not honestly, not something that I, uh, really expected um i kind of had a uh idea to have a slow start to the first week of this rally and then maybe try to pick up the pace the next week but uh i've just been feeling really comfy and really at home with this uh with the new team the bass dakar ktm team and so yeah honestly i'm just having a lot of fun out there Love it, man. That's really awesome to hear. Uh, let's jump into today. You just finished stage four a little bit ago, finished 20th. What was tough today? Was it tough leading? What, what was the issue today? Yeah, honestly, it's, uh, it's a little different this year. If you're leading out, the navigation is quite difficult. And so there's this big yo-yo effect going on right now where if you lead out, you get a poor result. If you start and then you start behind – the following day and then you get a good result so there's this big fluctuation with uh with results going on right now so I finished fourth uh, on the previous day stage so I started fourth today and uh, I was the third physical rider across the finish line and uh there were some difficulties with navigation and uh I had one little fall out there in the dunes which kind of hurt the hurt the overall times and whatnot but um the stage was relatively fast which means not a lot to uh, separate everyone. Everyone is kind of going full gas out there. And so if, uh, if you don't have any navigation errors, then there's uh, nothing really to set, separate everyone. So I hear you. Well, hey, I, I want to get into something, I think, for some of the fans out there that might not know what we mean when we talk about privateers versus factory riders and that sort of thing. And you've been in the privateer realm for a while. And I was just curious, you know, if you could explain some of the differences and what's tough about being a privateer versus being on a factory team. Yeah. Um, I guess the main difference, obviously the factory riders are getting paid to be here and a privateer has to pay to be here. Um, and, uh, that's my, that's my area there. So, uh, honestly, getting to the race is one of the hardest things as a privateer to be able to raise all the funds. And I had a lot of people uh, step up to help me out um, and, and get me here in the first place. Uh, so shout out to everyone that's donated, bought a T-shirt and just given me, uh, you know, a couple bucks to tr help, you know, pay the entry fee and things like that. So getting to the event is uh, one challenge in its own. And then uh, when we're here, you know, the, the factory riders, they have managers that are handling all the logistics for them and planning and doing everything. Um, so it's up to the rider to just hop on the bike and ride the bike. Uh, for the tier, there's a lot more to it. You know, we have a lot more strategy that we have to figure out for ourselves. And now for this year, we have the six tire rule, uh, which is a little bit funky. It's new to all of us. Um, and, uh, you know, we're all figuring it out together, but I got to figure it out on my own. So today I was the third day that I did uh, on one rear tire, trying to save everything for the week uh, to come. Cause I know uh, the terrain's going to be a little bit more aggressive, but yeah, it's just one of those things, you know, uh, the privateer space, we got to handle the logistics on our own. And then um, there's just, man, there's a handful of other stuff that's, uh, that's on our plate that the factory riders just uh, don't have to handle. So, yeah. Well, that makes your performance all the more impressive, oh, man. It's uh, it's amazing to see what you're doing out there. Kind of, I want to get into that just real quick about the tire situation because I know this hasn't come up a lot. We've been hearing it a lot just in the first couple stages. How do you save a rear tire on a motorcycle? Is it avoiding rocky areas? Do you change your course? Do you you just be more gentle with it? How does that work? Yeah, it's kind of an interesting situation, and I get 
the reason behind the rule, you know, uh, they're trying to slow us down and they're thinking that by limiting our tires that we're going to slow down and conserve them, which honestly just isn't the case. You know, we're out there trying to win and uh, we're going to go full gas regardless of the terrain. So uh, honestly, what's happening is now we're just riding on worn out tires, which makes it a little bit harder to break for obstacles and things like that. So um, it's a toss up. Uh, we've been kind of fortunate enough. The last few stages have been pretty much fully sand, which are less aggressive on tires. The first stage was a lot of rocks, which is, uh, it, it tears through them pretty quick. And, uh, the second week, uh, up in the North part of the country is a lot more rocky riverbeds, which are going to just chew up tires. So, um, yeah, I, I, I feel like I'm conserving my tires and then I get, come in at the, at the end of the stage and I look at it and it's kind of worn out. So yeah, it's one of those things. We're just going to have to take it as it comes and uh, hopefully we don't need to grab an extra tire because that's a 15 minute penalty if you do. So uh, either that or you're just running them bald. It's uh, one of those things. I think it's fresh to all of us and uh, we're all figuring it out. But at the end of the day, I think all of us are just going full gas and whatever <laughs> happens, you know, with the tires kind of happens. I like it. Yeah. And there was a thing or two about trying to conserve tires and in, uh, in stock cars. I can't imagine doing it in a motorcycle, but yeah. I, uh, one other thing that amazes me about you guys, you motorcycle riders, especially yourself is your pain tolerance. You know, a couple of years ago, you dislocated your shoulder, put it back in, then it came out again. How do you ride after putting, first of all, putting your shoulder back in and just dealing with that pain? How is that even possible? How do you guys do this all the time? Uh, I, Honestly, that's a great question. Uh, there's someone once told me you have to be a certain kind of stupid to ride a motorcycle fast. And uh, I think maybe that has something to do with it. You just kind of shut that part of your brain off uh, the, the pain receptors and that kind of stuff. Because last year, uh, I kept it kind of on the down low, but I actually broke my neck about three months before I went to uh, Dakar. So I only had uh, about a week of training after of uh, freshly, uh, broken neck. I got a plate oh. and six screws and three vertebrae fused into my neck. So, and then I raced Dakar, you know, three, roughly three and a half months later. So it's, uh, yeah, I don't know. It, it, it goes to show because Toby actually won the Dakar in Peru with a broken bone in his wrist. And so, I honestly don't know. I, I think their bike riders are some of the toughest dudes on the planet. And uh, maybe, like I said, maybe it's just because we're a certain kind of dumb. But at the end of the day, there's no other feeling like ripping a dirt bike through the desert. And I think that's kind of why we do it and we live for it. And so whatever the pain comes, we kind of push through it because the, the glory and the feeling afterwards, I think, outweighs it a little bit. You guys are amazing. I, I can't believe it, man. It's, it's incredible. Um, you know, you, you mentioned your support back at home. You're from St. George, Utah. And I know that town has supported you a lot and everyone around there. And I know you've been riding basically since you could walk on dirt bikes. What would be a result in this Dakar that you feel like would repay them for all their support and the effort everyone's put behind you? Uh, I, uh, I was raised, I think, pretty well, and I, I work really hard for everything I get. And so I understand the value of money and the amount that people have stepped up to give me is means a lot. And honestly, it, it uh, I don't know if I could ever repay everyone that's stepped up to help me. And I all I want to do is try to make everyone proud. And I'm I, I hope because I'm, you know, I was able to be in the overall lead for a day. Um you know, hopefully everyone is, is pretty stoked back home and whatnot. Cause I'm pretty stoked here. So, uh, what I did differently this year though, is everyone who donated, uh, some money, I actually put their first and last name on my bike, on the dirt bike graphics, try to keep everyone else involved. Um, there's a handful of companies that stepped up at the, uh, you know, small local companies that stepped up that donated, you know, a couple dollars here and there. And I actually wrote, uh, on with Sharpie on my dirt bike graphics, put their uh, company logo on there. So, um, yeah, it's like I said, uh, 
I don't know. I, I can't really even put into words how much it means to me that everyone stepped up to help me out. And, uh, it, I, I wouldn't have been able to make it here without them. So I hope to just finish, uh, you know, finish strong and, uh, Dakar so much stuff crazy stuff can happen and so I don't want to put any pressure on myself or anything else to go and get a certain uh, result because at the end of the day anything can happen out there and uh, what I really want to do is just cross the finish line and hope everyone back home is proud. Well I think I speak for everyone here at NBCSN that we're rooting for you man it's been awesome to see your performance we're obviously rooting for all the Americans out there, so we love to see you guys up front. Thank you for joining us, and best of luck in the rest of the rally. Thank you very much. For more Dakar coverage, stay here on the Motorsports on NBC YouTube page, and, of course, catch the action each night on NBCSN.